Hi, Paul Fuller from Bird Dogs of Field. Hi, Erica with Long Trail Veterinary Center. Well, wonderful, Erica. I'm, I'm here to see Dr. Canales. He is in an emergency right now, but I'm sure he'll be right with you. But we are very excited you're here today. Oh, well, thank you. That's wonderful. Well, you know, I'm very excited to be here because it's my understanding that the doctor has uh, some very new techniques that we're going to discuss. Yes, uh, Dr. Ryan's been very active in the, uh, in the hunting bird dog uh, breeding field and uh, working with clients all over the U.S. Oh, I'm very excited to hear about that. Well, good. Well, we'll just wait until he comes out of his emergency. All right. I'll let him know you're here. All right. Thank you so much. Hey, Ryan. Hey, Paul. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Nice Paul to meet you, too. Yeah. God, I'm glad we're here. Uh, bird Dogs of Field has been looking forward to talking with you about your chilled semen program. So this is wonderful. Let's, uh, let's grab a seat and talk. Great, thanks. All right. Bird Dogs Afield, presented by Native Performance Dog Food, providing performance diets for the canine athlete, and brought to you in part by RST, manufacturers of short chamber, low pressure shot shells. Mud River Dog Products, fundamentally changing the expectations of the hunter and dog enthusiast. Pete Shoe Dryer, helping to start every hunting day with more comfort. And On Point Kennel, providing the finest in dog training equipment. Well, Ryan, this is called the Lawn Trail Veterinary Center, correct? Yes, Paul. Well, that's exciting. And uh, we're here to talk to Ryan about something unique as far as my knowledge is concerned and that is uh, your chilled semen program. And, and tell me a little bit about that. I want to know uh, how long you've been doing it, uh, the benefits. But first, uh, tell me just what it is. Okay, the chilled semen is basically, um, we've, it's been around for years, like decades, really. And there's been a lot of different techniques that have evolved through the years. And what it really allows people to do is, for instance, you know, I deal a lot with the, the bird, you know, guys, um, the hunting dogs, um, and it gives them the ability to take semen from, you know, a champion stud dog that could be in California or as we are here on the East Coast and ship it to another part of the country or even internationally. Um, and it, it saves money, it saves, you know, time sending the female or obviously sending the male to, to that location. Um, years ago, what would happen is the, the extenders that they used to use would only be, you know, uh, functional for maybe 24, 48 hours. And they have developed many um, new techniques where some of these, these extenders are good for five to 10 days. Um, and the, the, the 10 day chilled semen is what we usually tend to use because a lot of the guys that we're dealing with are further away and we need that extra time um, to, to, you know, because you're dealing with a female that's, that's you know, you usually have, you know, a window of, uh, you know, 48 hours that they're fertile. And since we have to do progesterone testing and vaginal cytologies and things like that to know where they are in their reproductive status, those chill 10, chill 5 and chill 10 extended semen extenders gives us that ability to have the semen um, at the, to the bitch and, and, and not have it uh, be wasted. So if, if, for instance, a female was in season and she was meant to be bred on Monday due to shipping and, and time periods, lag phases, you have, you know, you could have, you'll have three or four days or five days of that, of that time period where you still can have, you know, close to 80, 90 percent motility and, you know, activity in the, as the semen is concerned to get these dogs bred. Now, uh, and this shows you my naivete here with this, but what is an extender? An extender is basically a, a solution, okay, that um, gives the semen, the sperm, um, the ability to be nourished and be preserved. And what we use when we call it chilled semen, what you're doing is you're taking the, metabolize, the, the metabolism of the sperm and you're, you're, you're slowing it down, but you're not, you're not shutting it off completely. You're not putting it into a, um, a state of, of, uh, 
of, of non-function and um, it slows it down. So if you slow down that, that metabolism, it gives that semen the ability to, to um, last a little longer versus if you didn't put it in an extender with any type of protection for the chilling or the nourishment, that semen would die. If you just leave semen out for, you know, if you left it out for a few hours, eventually your motility is going to go down. The viability of the, of the sperm is going to be very, very low. And, and if you shipped it out with any extender, then it, it wouldn't be viable at the, the, uh, the other side of the, the, uh, the shipment. Um, so basically, hence the name extender extends, extends the life. Right. In the, the two different types of extender we use, one actually has an egg yolk in it. And the egg yolk um, helps protect the semen itself and give it a little bit of a nourishment. So uh, let me think this through a little bit with you or talk it through with you. Um, do you. Do you wait until you have a female, uh, a dam that is ready to receive before you collect the semen? Is there already an order for semen from that uh, sire? Now you're asking, do they, they, they actually have that, uh, they, they, they contact us first, the sire, to get, get it shipped, correct? Well, I, I'm I'm asking if, if do you collect semen without a without a buyer without a user and just just store it or do you wait until you have a an actual uh, a female a dam ready to accept that uh, that chilled semen? I mean, you don't just collect it and store it and say I hope someone calls us and says hey I've got a female now ship some semen. Right. Okay. So how that works is. We can do, and that kind of goes into another sort of topic with frozen semen. So if you have um, a dog, for instance, um, you know, I deal a lot with Lloyd Murray um, at Long Gone Kennels. Um, and, you know, say, for instance, he had a dog, you know, his dog, Long Gone Boston, he wanted to freeze his semen. Um, he, say he's getting a little older in age, say he gets to eight, nine, ten years of age, and he wants to freeze that semen. What we can do is we can collect Boston and we can store it, okay, and it, it can last for, for years, hundreds, I mean, decades, okay, and then you can thaw that semen and then obviously, you know, send it to somebody to, for a dam that comes into season, somebody wants to breed of that dog. With the chilled semen, the way it works is somebody would call me, and they would, or they would say they would call Lloyd, for instance, and they'd say, Lloyd, we'd like to breed to buck, um, and we'd like to ship it to uh, South Carolina, um, for instance. Um, we would then collect buck, and we would do a cytology. We would be looking at the, the, the sperm, how does it move, um, uh, the, which they call the morphology, um, and the, 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 the count, how much is in an ML um, when you draw him. And it goes by, by, by millions and billions, okay? And then if things look good, I usually call the owner back and I tell him, I say, okay, we have a good collection. We, we extend it into the extender, which we'll show you after. Um, and we then ship that out to another veterinarian on the other side, generally, that has some experience in reproduction. Um, and that's, that's sort of the process that you go through. Um, but what we're trying to do is we're really trying to educate people because um, we have really good success rates when we do all, you know, do your progesterone testing, your cytologies. Um, we get really good success rates versus if you don't do those protocols, our, what we have a, a problem with is a lot of people will call us the day before or two days before when the female's ready. They think she's ready. And um, that's when we don't have as good of a success rate. Um, so it's, it's, it, it is, it's collecting and basically sending it out on an order for the chilled semen. Okay. Well, th that's what I was wondering. I, uh, there has to be a shelf life to chilled semen, so you just can't wait for the order. You have to, you have, to have one. So um, you've, you've uh, collected semen from the male uh, it looks good, things look promising, and so what do you tell 
the owner of the dam that, that, that has this female, uh, what do you tell them that they have to do? Okay, um, just to kind of get back to your the, the shelf life, the shelf life is generally between five to ten days. It depends on which extender you use. But when we collect it, what do we tell the, the, the owner, the client on the other end, is what we try to do is we try to, we, we like to educate them and speak with them before we even ship it. Um, because if there is any communication or breakdown in um, coordinating the shipping and having the proper person doing the insemination on the other end, that's where things fall apart. So what I usually tell the owner on the other end is I say, you know, to get a really good success rate, um, you know, I kind of go over the reproduction system of a dog because it's a lot different than, you know, other animals. Um, and we discuss, you know, the fertile period that I was kind of talking to you about a little earlier um, and tell them how critical it is that, uh, you know, a female will come in season and, you know, the typical textbook is 21 to 28 days, you know, they, they bleed and they swell and, you know, they flag and that's sort of the, the typical scenario. But it's really crucial out of those two to three weeks, a female may flag. She may show that she's um, accept, going to accept a male, but her fertile period is really only lasts about 24 to 48 hours, maybe maybe three days if you're lucky. Um, so that's that's that window that we're really trying to um, determine when we do our progesterone testing, and 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 so we want to make sure that they're on board and that the veterinarian on the other side. Um, understands that as, as well, and we try to help educating them if they don't have a lot of uh, knowledge in the reproduction. Well, we just took a, a very short break. Uh, so, Ryan, we're, we were talking about the female, and I think that uh, for a lot of amateurs, uh, that would be that would be the, the hardest part. You know, I never I never realized, and and I grew up in a in a the home of a veterinarian, and we used to breed dogs. Uh, but I never realized the window was so short. Uh, so that's really important, isn't it? Yes, Paul, it's very important. And it's, it's, it's very, it's, it, it can be frustrating for us as the veterinarians and for the clients because, um, you know, I know I'm being a little redundant, but people do, you know, and we do. I mean, I raised beagles for 20 years, and then I got into the setters. Um, and, and so I, I've, I've been into the reproduction for quite, you know, sort of community for a long time. And we do, we do know our dogs, but the problem is, is that there is that very, very short period. And now when I talk about that, the confusing thing is that a lot of people say, well, my back, uh, you know, the, the dog across the street, um, uh, you know, the, the cross mixed dog mm -hmm. just jumped the fence, bred the female and they they always get a litter of puppies. Right. And then you and I are trying to breed championship right. uh, um, quality yeah. dogs, and, and we're struggling sometimes, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what can happen is when you're doing side-by-side, -side, and what I mean by side-by-side -side is you either – some guys don't do, like to do natural service or, in some, or you know breeding. They like to collect the male – and then literally do a side by side. You collect it, and then you you inseminate the female. Okay, there's no extender or anything involved. Maybe some insemination or AI uh, um, fluid to mimic prostatic fluid. Um, when you do the, that, it, it's a little um, a little more close to the natural service. But when you're doing dealing with chilled chilled semen, doesn't last that long in the female versus natural breeding where they have a tie i mean semen can they've they've noted semen can last in the female for you know five to six seven days it is it is awful long and i and i kind of you know uh i have my thoughts on how sure. how true that is but when you're dealing with the chilled semen yeah they have research has shown that it can last longer than we sometimes think but with the chilled semen it, it really only lasts you if it lasts a few days you're, you're doing well. So you don't, you have that, you don't have that time period is length. You, you don't have the, the room for error that you do with natural breeding. The room for error goes from, you know, this distance to sort of like this. Well, that's, this is really interesting. Now you mentioned that the chilled semen uh, technology has been around for a long time. Again, have there, tell me 
right now what improvements there might be over, say, 10 years ago, and why the sporting dog industry or the pointing dog, which you and I deal with, the pointing dog industry, hasn't embraced this earlier? Is it just that no one has taken the initiative, or, 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 or what is it? Again, the, is there new technology, and is this fairly new to the pointing dog industry? From from my knowledge, it it does seem like it's 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 hard to explain if it's new or not. It, it's not really new per se, but I think it's it's becoming more um, accepted. Accepted could be the word maybe to use. Pe- people um, like like Lloyd, for instance. You know, Lloyd asked me about it. He he really didn't have a lot of knowledge or information about it, and he asked me because somebody you know, asked him about, hey, can we, can we ship some semen from Boston? You know, and, and you know, he called me because he knew I, I, I deal a lot with that sort of stuff. And um, what happens, it really started with the show breeders. I mean, they, they ship semen all around the world all the time. And um, I just don't think the, the breeders, the hunting guys, pointing guys really uh, got that involved with it. Um, and and, and I, I don't know why they haven't started doing it sooner than, than, than later, so to speak. And uh, is, there, is there technology today that, that is better than, say, 10 years ago? Yeah, the technology today, like years ago, we used to collect them differently. They used to use a sleeve, um, sort of like a baby bottle sleeve. Some people still use it. They use the, the old rods. Um, you know, and, and they, you know, the typical thing is you, you collect it, you collect it. the more the better was, is the old school. Um, there's three fractions of semen. There's a first, second, and a third fraction. And really what you want is the second fraction. That is, that has the sperm in it. You're still going to have some sperm in the other parts of the fractions, but you don't need that. It actually can contaminate your sample when you're doing chilled semen. You really want that second fraction. So the technology, the way we collect dogs nowadays is totally different. Um, the way I collect them is we, we actually collect just the second fraction. I don't touch the first or the third fraction, the collecting um, container that we use. Um, we use a new, um, it's called a Mavic catheter that we use. It's uh, put out by Minitube. And the difference between that and the older version is that it actually has um, a bulb, and we'll show you guys later what that looks like. Um, it's got a bulb on the end, and it basically mimics the tie of a male dog with the female. And what happens is that cause, when they tie and you have, it's called, a, I'm getting a little technical here, but it's, it's a, called a bulbous glandus, and it's a, a sort of a, uh, it causes pulsations and contractions in the female um, and when you use this Mavic catheter, it actually mimics that identical situation. So what the new catheter does, it just tries to make it as natural as possible. Um, and it basically, you just put it into the female and you blow up this balloon, so to speak, um, apparatus, and it just stays there. And the females don't, they, they don't even move from it or, or get bothered by it. And you slowly over time, and it's generally between 35, 40, 45 minutes. So you go up to 60 minutes while you're injecting this. And it's very slowly. Um, and you're, again, you're trying to mimic the natural service versus the old technique used to be where you pick them up on their, the front end, would stay down, you'd pick up the rear, and you would inject everything, which would be probably 20 milliliters of first, second, and third fraction, or you know, depending on the size of the dog. And you would hold it up there for 10 minutes. <laughs> you know, you've probably seen that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And, and so now um, we, we go very slowly. We literally put in the second fraction first, which is the semen. Mm-hmm. And then we follow that with um, uh, an, the, an extender AI. Um, and that can be, and that mimics the prostatic fluid. Mm-hmm. And that's clean. That's, that's a sterile solution. Mm-hmm. Um, and that helps push the semen um, into the uh, into the cervix, through the cervix, obviously, into the uterus. Um. Uh, when, the, when you, and, and we're going to take a look at some of the tools, right? Good. Uh, when you ship the semen, um, how, is, how do you maintain the, the, the chilled effect? How, do you, how is that done? 
Okay, what we do, and, and I'll show you guys, we have a, it basically is a glorified styrofoam um, apparatus. Um, it has been tested. The, one, the, the, the company that we deal with um, has tested in these conditions that gives us, uh, you know, a time period to keep the semen at, at, at that proper cooling temperature. Um, because what can happen is if it goes too high or goes too low, obviously if you go too low, you're gonna freeze it. And if it's not frozen properly, you're gonna run into issues. And if it's too warm, it's just gonna die off as well. Um, so basically what you do is after you chill it, and I'll show you guys later what we do, basically sort of the step-by-step -step process of what we do. Um, once we get it into our egg yolk or into our extender, we then put it into a refrigerator and we let, let it chill for two hours, okay? And then after that two hours, I take my styrofoam container and there's two, it looks just like your um, ice packs you have in your refrigerator. And we put, there's two of those in there and there's a little conical vial that you put the, uh, the tube that has the semen in it. So there's no, fr they can't free, it can't, the temperature can't change fluctuate mm -hmm. um, and then you put that in there and you close the cover and you send it out bring it to the FedEx and, and we like to overnight it that's the best way to do it and um, I always talk to the airlines and make sure um, that it's not going to be it's going to be in a controlled mm -hmm. um, temperature sort of quarters y you generally don't have to worry too much about that because it is protected but we still I mean you're dealing I mean some of these dogs I mean these stud fees can be anywhere from a thousand dollars you know, and up depending on who you're dealing with. So you want to, I mean, you're looking at quite a bit of money. Um, so you want to make sure it's preserved and sent, shipped properly. Well, not only that, but uh, you've got, you know, in the old fashioned way, the natural way, if the, the stud fee and plus, you know, I can't imagine being in California, shipping a, uh, my female uh, clear across the country in an airplane and, and having going through all that process, having it shipped back. This just seems like such a, a cleaner and easier way to do it. And, and uh, I just think it's a, a wonderful uh, uh, service that you're offering here. And, and I, I'd really like to look at some of the tools and, and uh, techniques. So can we do that? Absolutely, Paul. Great, let's go. <laughs> Hi, friends. You know, we have an unconditional bond with our canine athlete friend. That bond is built upon respect. Reward that respect with a premium dog food. My choice is native. It has no fillers, no soy, no wheat, no corn, no preservatives. It comes in four levels of fat and protein to meet the stress and activity level for your dog. Make the switch today, native performance dog food. Your dog will be happy and so will you. Okay, we're just gonna look at some of the tools we use for doing our chilled semen techniques. Um, as we kind of spoke, you know, when Paul and I were talking earlier, um, I'm just gonna kind of run through what we do. Um, we, as we talked before, we like just to get the second fraction. And to do that, we now, with the you know, sort of advanced technologies, um, Minitube has done a really great job um, on um, manufacturing these um, non, you know, these sort of non-sperm um, killing type materials. Um, we have different colors, and one is for a first fraction, this one would be for a second fraction, and then this red one would be for your third fraction. Um, what I tend to do is we just kind of make it simple and I just use one and because we know we're, we've done it you know for years now we just basically get our our second fraction um, and you take one of these little conical vials and you just put it on there and you get your technique right and you know you usually get a couple mls of, of second fraction um, and you look at it you do your sort of quality testing under the microscope um, after you do that collection um, and then after, if things look okay, um, semen quality, um, for example, we then take um, an extender that we talked about, which here is the Chill 10, and we take this extender and mix it with some egg yolk, um, put in the proper parts um, per volume, and then after we do that, um, 
we then have a refrigerator that we keep at 39 to 40 degrees Fahrenheit, which is really critical for chilled semen. Um, and what I do is because as you open these refrigerators, opening and shutting the refrigerator, you're going to fluctuate your temperature. So what we do is we have a little jar. It's no more than just a little chicken noodle soup, coffee cup sort of thing. We fill it up with water. We put our chilled semen in there and we leave it there for uh, um, about two hours. Um, and then after that, after that's been in there and it's chilled for two hours, I can then take this styrofoam um, container and you basically have your freezer packs, you put one on each side and there's another vial that you put your, your semen in and you close this up, you put it in here um, and you basically, I always send you know, a little extra AI um, extender there for the client on the other end and we close this, close this up and you ship it out through FedEx. Um, on the other side when they receive this um, the veterinarian on the other side will remove the contents and we'll do a, a check on his end and we always keep a sample on our end um, as well um, for verification, vacation, that verification that things are, uh, are are still viable, and then when we go to inseminate, we basically um, use these little pipettes. Um, now this is a very this is actually more than just a syringe um, that you would use for vaccinations or or um, you know ther uh, injection therapy, sort of to speak. Um, there's no rubber on them. It's all plastic. And the reason we use these is because um, if you get rubber or any type of things that will kill the sperm, then obviously you have decreased succession rate for your, with your AI. So we, we, we get these specific um, syringes. Um, and you basically open your, your vial that has the semen in it. You draw your semen out. Um, if depending on which semen you use, sometimes you can actually spin it and re-extend it if you do find that it is a little uh, contaminated. Um, but if not, you don't need to. You can just put in the whole entire contents, chilled semen, extend it all in one egg yolk into the female. Um, and we use this catheter that we spoke about um, that has this bulb on the end of it which mimics the tie. And it, you just blow it up, which I have already done, and your semen is in here in your syringe and you basically just insert this into the female hangs out of her and they never f have any issue with it and you literally just over 35 40 45 minutes just slowly inject it um, after that sometimes we'll add a little AI um, culture medium suspension to um, make sure we flush out this tube and that's really about all it is and then uh, we wait the 65 days and hope for good news from the client on the other end. Folks we've had a wonderful visit to the Lawn Trail Veterinarian uh, Center here in uh, Williston, Vermont. We visited with Dr. Ryan Canales. Ryan, thank you so much for all of your yeah, time. Thank you too, Paul. I and really do appreciate good. it. Good. Okay. And his very supportive wife, Erica. Thank you so much. Our pleasure. Wonderful. We really enjoyed our visit. Thanks for all of your advice, and uh, we'll keep in touch. Thanks, Absolutely. Paul. Absolutely. All right. Bird Dogs Afield, presented by Native Performance Dog Food, and brought to you in part by RST Shot Shells. Mud River Dog Products, Peach Shoe Dryer, and On Point Kennel.